Good morning and welcome to worship. It's wonderful to see all of your smiling faces. Someday I'm going to teach Presbyterians to fill the front rows. But until that miracle occurs, um, it's wonderful to, to see all of your smiling faces. I know that there are folks that watch us on YouTube and others. I often hear from them and how much they appreciate that. But they don't see you because they see the front rows and the liturgist and me and the choir and Wesley, but that's all right. Some of you are visitors for the first time. These are our friendship cards. We'd love for you to fill this out so we know of your presence and can be in touch with you. Thank you. There's lots going on this week. It's Holy Week. Not only is there worship today with communion, we will gather in this room again on Thursday evening for communion on Monday, Thursday. We'll gather at noon on Friday for a very basic, very still, quiet Good Friday service where we will pray and we will hear the story of the crucifixion and uh, leave in silence, meditating on all that we've heard. And then we'll be back together to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus next Sunday. Um, between, oh, it's Saturday. I almost forgot. Easter egg hunt. You've got grandchildren, children, friends, neighbors. Uh, many thanks to the folks who are putting that on. I am, I am grateful for all of that. Uh, it's going to be fun. Lots going on. It is also... I may not have one in front of me, but hopefully your bulletins have uh, one great hour of sharing envelopes. Terrible tornadoes in the Mid-South. Presbyterian disaster assistance is there. And they were on the ground the next day in Mississippi and in Arkansas because we funded them last year with the one great hour of sharing offering. And the Presbyterian Hunger Program is at work around the world helping to feed people because you funded them last year. I hope you will give generously this year to the One Great Hour of Sharing. You may take that envelope home and bring it back next week. I'm not going to make as big a deal next week because we'll have so many visitors here for Easter. And I'd like them to give to First Presbyterian. But you may give to both. I want to ask Todd Karsten to come up. You've heard from him many times. Todd has chaired our um, Way Forward Committee and has continuing news. And so thank you so much, Todd. I'm grateful. Good morning. Um, I remember being on committees at school when I was a teacher. And I wasn't really sure where they were going. Um, that's a big difference between those school committees and the committee that we were just on for a year and a half with the Way Forward Committee. Um, the, we were looking for tangible results, for actionable items, and I'm really glad to say that that's exactly what we got. Um, two weeks ago, Dan Holloway, our um, consultant from Pinnacle, presented 1615 recommendations. Um, the executive summary of that all that means is it's a little bit shorter version of the longer um, report is available for you out there. Um, I, I recommend it to you. It is going to be the blueprint for the session going forward, and I'm just really excited about it. Just a reminder also that, that we were all part of this process. It wasn't just the session. It wasn't just the Way Forward Committee. We had two different um, listening sessions. We had discussion groups. We had that survey from which we got all this really important data. Um, so we are really excited about this. Um, today's session, we're gonna to start to, to look at those and we'll decide what priority to put on each one of these. Bottom line, guys, is this has been a year and a half in the making. We are really excited, we the committee and the session, and I hope you guys are too, um, about where this is all going. Thanks so much for being a part of this. So after church, our ushers will be busy. Not only will they have offering plates, and you may put your visitor's card in that, and your one great hour of sharing envelopes, and your regular offering, 
but they'll have the executive summary. If you want to read the whole report, you may read the whole report. They've got a dozen or so copies of that whole report there um, at the uh, usher's table. We don't want to keep any secrets from you, but we don't want to overwhelm you with data because um, it's, it's really exciting to, to have a tangible plan that we can move forward as First Presbyterian Church. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to worship.
Hosanna, we pray. Save us, Lord. Save us from ourselves when we push for the pride, doubt, or fear. Save us from the systems that keep us down when we cannot see the way out. Save us from our sins when we feel the weight pressing on our hearts. Remind us, O Lord, the crowds are shouting at the same time. Soon be screaming, crucified. Save us, pray. Friends, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Please be with you. Please take time to pass a piece of advice with your neighbor. Our first Bible reading is a story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. This reading is from Matthew 21, 1 through 11, beginning on page 27 of the New Testament of the Pew Bible. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with them. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna! to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Good morning. Stand with me as you're able and let's sing from your bulletin.
adult children will come up here for a time with me. It's got a lot going on. I'm not sure where we can sit today. We've got plants and hi, do you want to come up here? Great. Let's sit together on the front row here. Let's sit down. I like to sit with y'all, but I'm not sure I can today. Better not sit up here, I might get in trouble. <laughs> so in our Bible story today that um, Mr. Bill read, we heard the people coming into Jerusalem with Jesus, and what were they singing and shouting? Clothes. They were not singing hallelujah, but we sung it in our songs today. Ho, ho, exactly, ho, Santa, which in Aramaic means Lord save us. They were saying, Son of David, Hosanna, Hosanna. It is a phrase of praise. We often say it or sing it in church. Or Hosanna, we praise God, but it especially is a plea to save us. And I'm grateful that the children said that because, you know, Jesus loves the little children. He even said when they, you know that story, they were, the children wanted to come to be with Jesus and be blessed by him, and some of the disciples were grumpy, and they were pushing the, the children away and Jesus said no let the little children come to me for such is the kingdom of God and here in our story today the children were shouting Hosanna and with the adults waving the palm fronds I lost my palm frond I had it and it's not up here Probably in my office, there's a palm. We're going to share. We've got our little palm fronds, and then you've got yours. A little frond to remember that wonderful entry into Jerusalem. They were probably holding big palms, almost as big as our plants here, our peace lilies. But we've got little fronds to remind us of that story and of how they were shouting, Lord, save us, Hosanna. That may be the best prayer I know. The prayer, thank you, and the prayer, Hosanna. Lord, save us. Let's, let's close in prayer. I'll say a line and you say a line. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for Jesus. Who came to save us. We are grateful. We are grateful. In his name we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Alright, you all can go to Sunday school. I think Ms. Caroline and Carter are gonna help you. Thank you very much.
folks that uh, are better. Uh, Ann Vandenberg, I saw her this week. You know, she's having cancer treatment. She feels okay, and her numbers are good. And so praise God. I'm grateful for that news. You may also have heard the news that our church member Richard Grasso died, and also John Haygood. And Jarl was with us last week in church, heard from hospice that he was declining, rushed back to Virginia, and was at his bedside with her children when John passed. And so just heartbreak of both of these news, uh, these two fine men, and um, we grieve. Uh, lots of other prayer concerns about the tornadoes in the Mid-South and the shootings in Nashville. You know, I have a daughter in Nashville and not far from the Covenant Presbyterian Church and school, so I am glad that she is fine, my niece in Nashville is fine, but I grieve with the families and the church that has been through that um, terrible stuff, and I know you do too. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy God, we shout Hosanna and celebrate Jesus' entry while we also acknowledge the crucifixion that is to come and the real suffering of your people. In this moment of prayer, hear our cries for mercy, peace, and justice. Reassure us with your promises, Holy God, as we remember that your steadfast love endures forever. We do grieve with families of murder victims in Nashville and other places. We grieve with that church and pray for those who are recovering from wounds. We pray with and for church members who grieve. Lord God, heal the heart sick. Apply your balm of love to all your hurting people. Reassure us with your promises, holy God, as we remember that your steadfast love endures forever. We pray with and for the people of Ukraine, for those affected by tornadoes and storms, for folks out west affected by flooding rains and winds. Care for your people, O oh Lord, in our nation, and around the world. We pray all these things in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Our second reading continues this um, Palm Sunday story. You all uh, have heard this before. But often we remember the Palm Sunday. We don't remember what Jesus did next. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. He overturned the tables of money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it's written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. The blind also came to him and in the temple and cured them. The chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that Jesus did and heard the little children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They became angry, said to him, do you hear what they're saying? Jesus said to them, the them is the Pharisees. Jesus said to them, have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise for yourself. He left them, went out to the city of Bethany, and spent the night there. The Lord add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of his holy word. you can stay seated for. It's in your head note, number 209.
Thank you, Wesley. That's a beautiful, that's a new song for us. And it's there in the hymnal, and thank you for finding that. We're going to practice it some more, because it's lovely. Before I begin my sermon, I, I want to point out, many of y'all have looked back and seen the brickwork. And some of, some of you have asked, why is the back wall exposed? We're fixing the leak. And I think we're close to having it fixed. But isn't that beautiful brickwork in the original building? Um, it's, it's lovely. And uh, it reminds me of what a beautiful church we have. And it's beautiful deep. And you know the best part of our church? I'm looking at you. Because the church is really not our beautiful structure. Church is y'all. Is us. What a, what a beautiful church. Now the sermon begins. <laughs> you ever driven into a big city from the distance and seen the tall buildings, the church spires perhaps, or the skyscrapers? And, and then you drive into the city again and again. You've been there before, and it just starts to look familiar. When I was in college, I did an internship in Washington, D.C. And the first time I came into the city, it was amazing. And I rode the um, subway, the metro, and stopped at the Capitol Hill station, and I walked into where I was going to do my internship on Capitol Hill, and it was all the patriotic buildings that you see, it was, it was amazing. Then the next week I went back, and the next week, and it became very routine. And going into the patriotic city, into that, that wonderful Washington, D.C., became very routine. And I stopped noticing some of the beauty and the architecture and the artwork. I wonder what it was like for Jesus and the disciples going into Jerusalem that time with the palm fronds and the children and the adults shouting and praising Jesus and praising God. Did they come over the Mount of Olives and look at the holy city and stop in awe? Or was it routine to them? Remember, Jesus had been going to Jerusalem every year, sometimes several times a year, coming into the city from the Mount of Olives, as most of the Galileans did, coming down on foot. You remember the first time Jesus was there in the holy city, don't you? He was 12 years old. He had just been bar mitzvahed and made a man in Jewish terms and went with his family on the pilgrimage. And Jesus found his way into the temple. And he sat at the feet of the teachers and he asked them about God and he asked them about the Old Testament and he kept listening. And Mary and Joseph and the family from Galilee all packed up and probably John, young John the Baptist was there. He didn't have that name yet, but he was John. And they packed up and they went back to um, a day's walk outside of Jerusalem. And Jesus wasn't with them. They thought he was with the rest of the family. And poor Mary and Joseph just panicked. They ran back into the city. They searched for three days. And... Um, the story goes like this. When they came to Jerusalem and entered and reached Bethpage to the Mount of that's the wrong quote. <laughs> Thought I had to, oh, here it is. Sitting, there was Jesus sitting among the teachers, listening to them, asking them questions. And all who heard were amazed at the boy's understanding and his answers. His parents saw him and were astonished. His mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching with great anxiety. And Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I would be in my father's house? Yeah, Jesus was very comfortable in Jerusalem. 
and in his father's house. The blind and the lame were also there, and children and folks who needed prayer. This beautiful temple was a place of worship there on the Mount of Zion. But one thing was very different when Jesus was there as a man and when he was there as a boy. About 10 years after Jesus uh, was a boy, the high priest became, Caiaphas became high priest. And his political enemies ran the markets around Jerusalem. I learned this this week. There had been a market by the Sheep Gate. There had been a market on the Mount of Olives. So Caiaphas wanted to put them out of business and opened the market in the temple. And nobody was happy about it. Not the political enemies and not the religious folks. I suppose the money changers and the people making a profit and selling doves and other things were happy to have jobs. But almost everyone in ancient Jerusalem was uncomfortable and unhappy with these money changers that Caiaphas had brought into the temple and opened there at that market. God's temple, the house of prayer for all people, to quote Jeremiah. And Jesus says, look, you've turned this into a den of robbers. And the children and others were singing and shouting. You heard me tell our children's sermon what it means. Lord, save us. Hosanna. Save us. Save us. Hosanna. Have you ever been to a revival or a tent meeting? I have preached at a, at a Presbyterian revival. It was fun. At the Sycamore Grove Presbyterian Church outside of Batesville, Mississippi, in Tate County, kind of between Oxford and Batesville, I was a pastor in that area years ago. And they always had a homecoming week and revival at that Presbyterian church. Now, don't worry. They were very proper Southern Presbyterians. We <laughs> sang hymns, but I preached Sunday morning, Sunday night, and several more nights. And people came and they came back and they renewed their faith in God. Sometimes a revival weekend or a, a special weekend like Curcio or pilgrimage or something like that is very uplifting for a church, for people. Have you, have you read about the, or heard about the revival at Asbury University this uh, year in Kentucky? Amazing. They started chapel uh, on a Tuesday. Chapel is required. All the students were there. And some folks stayed after chapel and kept singing. And sometimes a student would come up to the pulpit and read and pray and they kept singing all afternoon and into the night. They gathered the next day to sing and pray and praise and the word spread and by the magic of social media and people came from all over the Midwest and the Upper South to Wilmore, Kentucky this past February to sing and to pray and to praise God. And I bet more than once they shouted, Hosanna! Lord save us. I bet they also shouted, Alleluia. <clears throat> Alleluia. All praise God. All praise Yah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. I kind of like those kinds of revivals and other things now. I don't want to make you nervous. I'm not going to, we're not going to start shouting Hosanna and praising God. But it, it feels good to sing and to pray and to Praise. And they did that as they went into Jerusalem. And the children said it and shouted it. And some of those the very same folks who shouted, who sang, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And Judah, Judas was there. And Jesus predicted that he would betray him. Judas fled. Jesus sat at the table with his disciples. 
and he broke the bread and he shared the cup and he, and he, and he did the first communion service. And they sang together, the apostles and Jesus. And he went out to the Garden of Gethsemane where he prayed. And he prayed hard and the disciples couldn't even pray with him. They fell asleep, but he prayed hard. And then at midnight, there came Judas with uh, temple police and with a kiss in the dark, Judas betrayed his Lord and Savior and handed him over to the authorities who would eventually crucify him. And some in the crowd on the next day, the same crowd that had waved the palm branches like you had in your hands, that same crowd shouted, crucify him, crucify him. How quickly our hearts can turn. And Jesus was crucified and he died. But that's not the end of the story. And you have to come back next week <laughs> to hear the story of resurrection. But Jesus was at the table with his disciples, even Judas who betrayed him, and he shared that Lord's Supper. And I invite you to our Lord's Supper, all of you, because it is our Lord's table, not a Presbyterian table or a Protestant table, but Jesus invites us to this table. When it is time, you can come down the center aisle and share the bread and the cup and take it back to your seats. If you need one of us to bring that to you, we will. We want everyone to participate in our Lord's Supper. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It's Jesus who invites you to this table. Let's pray. Lord, it's right in our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. In your wisdom, you made all things and sustained them by your power. You made us in your image, setting us into your world to love and serve you, to live in peace with your whole creation. From generation to generation, you've guided us, sending prophets to turn us from wayward paths into the way of righteousness. Out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son among us to redeem us. Therefore, we praise you, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. We're grateful for our Lord Jesus Christ, who knew our joys and sorrows, our struggles with temptation. He was like us in every way except sin. In him we say what you, we see what you created us to be. Though blameless, he suffered willingly for our sin. Though innocent, he accepted death for the guilty. On the cross, he offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the life of the world. Remembering all your mighty acts, O oh Lord, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you've given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that these gifts of bread and juice may be for us the communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. Empower us and send us out to share the good news with the world. The Lord, we gather and pray with the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven,
On the night of his arrest, our Lord took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, this is my body broken for you. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. It's St. Paul who reminded us that every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for us, the people. Feed on them in your hearts with faith and thanksgiving. I invite you to take Please stand if you're able and join me for our final hymn. All glory, love, and honor, page 196. Thank you. 